April marks the 200th anniversary of the birth of Charlotte Bronte. She, of course, the author of one of my favorite books of all time, Jane Eyre. You have your Austinites, your Hufflepuffs, but I am a devoted and dedicated airhead. Jane Eyre is one of my most reread books, although it's been years since I've touched it last. I'm almost afraid to dip into it again. Not sure how it's going to hold up. I mean, poor comparison perhaps, but when I was younger, The Dukes of Hazard and Knight Rider were the pinnacle of TV entertainment. Now, in the ensuing centuries, there have been no shortage of homages to Ms. Eyre. Last year, I read Rejane by Patricia Park, which reimagines Jane as a Korean-American. Now, Bertha Mason was somewhat troublingly an overzealous New Yorker vegan feminist academic. And my biggest problem is when you reimagine Jane as an Asian-American au pair in a New York household, it really invokes a lot of Sunni Previn to Mr. Rochester's Woody Allen, and your Byronic lead should never invoke images of Woody Allen. And just this year, Lindsay Fay released her Jane Steele, and I loved, loved this book. Part of it is that I've been beaten down by my spate of Korean authors this spring. While Jun Young's Shelter was edgy and sharp, Han Kang's Human Acts was pure, blunt force trauma. I mean, this story of a murdering governess is pure confection by comparison. And I love this delicious romantic tale. Our main character and narrator, Jane Steele, is up front right from the very beginning and cops to her very many murders in the opening paragraphs of the book. She also says that she was inspired to write this by a particularly riveting story called Jane Eyre. And she prefaces each chapter with a quote from the original work. And she notices similarities. The dismissive aunt, the absolutely horrific boarding school, and of course the Byronic love interest. But what this does is it frees up the author, Lindsay Fay, to borrow at will, so she can pick up pieces that she wants to and discard those that don't work. And we as the reader aren't left looking around every corner, looking for that skeleton hidden away in the manor, and can just sit back and enjoy the story. Lindsay Fay nails the language and channels the very best of the 19th century female writers with her distinct use of imagery and pacing. This can, in the wrong hands, veer away from the gothic into more purple prose, but here it feels familiar and cozy. Now, language aside, this is a thoroughly modern tale with varied sexual orientations, cultural representation, and a staunchly feminist heroine who avoids the plight common of heroines arriving in London in the 19th century, penniless and without a job. She instead relies on her educational background and helps write scandalous broadsheets for the wonderfully realized Hugh Grizzlehurst, and his daily report of mischief and mayhem. Hugh frankly needs the help considering the crimes against the English language that he is guilty of, such gems such as the delinquitorious scallywag which compenetrated this most perspicable act, an act sufficient to strike thunderific fear into the hearts of even the most auspiciary citizens remains at large. This book was a ton of fun, and I really, really did enjoy it. I mean, retellings can be a bit hit or miss, but this managed to retain all the elements of the original that I loved while setting it against a backdrop of murder and mayhem. If Alexander Cheese, the Queen of the Night, is Charlotte Bronte writing Jason Bourne, this is Jane Eyre as Dexter Morgan. Now, it turns out I'm going to be sticking around London during the 19th century for a little bit longer. Kamel, over at What Kamel Reads, has set up a Goodreads read-along we're all going to participate with Michelle Faber's The Crimson Petal and The White. I've loved Michelle Faber's A Book of Strange New Things and Under the Skin, so I am eager to jump into this book, despite the fact that it is a massive brick. If you're interested in joining, come look for us over at Goodreads. But in the meantime, I hope you have a great reading week, and we'll talk to you later.